Hi everyone, I'm Diana Sebsta, Director of Bereavement for the Joseph T. Quinlan Bereavement Center and Karen Ann Quinlan Hospice. And I wanna welcome you to Grief Matters, conversations about life and death. No subject is off limits and no topic is taboo. I wanna invite you to send in your questions about anything end of life, dying, death, and grief. Hi everybody, it's Diana Sebsta. I'm here today with another episode of Grief Matters, where we can talk about anything to do with death, dying, and bereavement, anything end of life. And today I wanted to talk about how do we support children who are grieving? A lot of times you will hear the, the coined phrase, the forgotten mourners. The children are the forgotten mourners. And that's a lot of the times because as adults, we may be so wrapped up in our own grief and our own trying to run a household or go back to work or raise our kids that they seem to be doing well. So we don't really talk to them or we don't really understand what they might be going through or know how to support them. <clears throat> the same thing happens in a school setting. A lot of times kids will be doing great and then a loss happens. And then we might see some regressive behaviors, some acting out behaviors like bullying. Um, we may even see low attendance rate. They're calling out all the time because they say they don't feel good. Um, and even their grades might be slipping. So we often find that schools or parents will call us alarmed that something is going on with their child and they're not really sure what's going on because they used to do so well and what's going on in the school now. So what we've developed is a two day workshop for school professionals called Healing in the Classroom. And basically what we do is we teach the school professionals how to recognize grief responses in their students. Um, in other words, recognize that a student is having some issues with grief and then what to do about it. How do we support them in that? So it's a very intensive training. And what we do is we do a crash course in grief. That's a good foundation to start off on, to know what is appropriate in grief. What are some valid expectations? You know, What can we expect from the child who's grieving? What can we expect from us who may be grieving? But then we go into a very detailed um, discussion about developmental perspectives and grief for children. Because we know that at certain ages in our development, for very young children, they may not have the verbal capacity to express what's going on in their bereavement. So we find that there's a lot of internalizing of their grief feelings. And when we do that, and we don't have a way to get those feelings out, it often will come out into somatic symptoms. Um, they may experience a tummy ache or a headache. Those seem to be the two most common complaints, uh, somatic complaints from our young people. So what we do is we teach the school professionals how to help the children identify their grief feelings and how to give voice to it, how to externalize it in more healthy ways. So one, to be able to process the grief and to be able to tell the story, which is so important, but also to help alleviate those somatic symptoms caused by internalizing all of these big feelings. So then, you know, the things that we can do to support them, we spend a lot of time going over different rituals, different supportive interventions, um, memorials, uh, <clears throat> support group uh, implementation, um, how to what some interventions in a support group setting. So we'll talk about art therapy. We'll talk about bibliotherapy, the importance of reading a book that might be able to help them understand what they're going through. We do music therapy um, and we talk about the benefits of a support group setting and the power of having other people who are there who may understand what the other child is going through. Very powerful. In our Children's Art Bereavement programs that we hold here, we hear all the time that the kids love coming here because this is the place where they feel normal. 
other kids are going through what they're going through, feeling similar feelings that they're going through, so then they feel normal. That's the power of the group. So once you're able to offer an individual support with a child or a support group setting for a child in a school setting, it is immensely helpful because you think about all the time that a child spends in the school setting. It's like us at work. We spend more time in school and at work than we usually do in our home. So we really want to have healthy support systems in place school professionals who understand that if something is happening with a child that is not normal, that all of a sudden they start acting out or they're calling out missing school or their grades aren't doing very well, it's not because they're a bad child. It's not hormonal. Let's do a little research. We find out it's a loss and then we go in and we help the child. So if you would like to have more information about this, if you yourself are a school professional, or you know someone who's a school professional that would benefit from this training, pop onto our website, karenandquinlanhospice.org, and look up under services. There's a drop down menu, and it shows what learning opportunities we have available. And you'll be able to register for that event. It's coming up soon. We're going to be doing it in August. And then you can get right in on there. It's going to be a virtual training. So you don't even have to worry about COVID protocols. And you're going to get a textbook and a workbook. And it's going to be an amazing experience. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns, always give us a call at 973-948-2283. Go out and have an awesome weekend. It's going to be hot. And I'll talk with you soon. Bye.